Uh, first off, I'll congratulate Marshall. Uh, excellent team. Uh, fantastic. Uh, fantastic effort on the day from them. Um, so we congratulate them and we tip our hats off to them. Um, from our standpoint, uh, we look like a team that was playing our fifth game in 13 days. Uh, we look gassed. Um, it showed a little bit in terms of our press, which has been one of the best things that we can do as a team. Uh, we weren't able to really press because the legs just weren't there for us. Not having Andres Muriel was big too. He takes seven goals out of our team. Um, it's hurt. It hurts. And this year has been a little bit of a struggle for us in terms of the injuries. Um, all that said, uh, like I said, you tip your hat to Marshall. I think on the day they were the better team and they deserved it. Um, that said, we were in the game right to the bitter end. So uh, I'm proud of my team. Our guys fought hard. Uh, we've put on about 2,000 miles in the last two weeks. And like I said, five games in 13 days. So uh, very, very proud of the my team. Uh, and along the way, won a championship and, and shocked everybody with what we went and did at, at Butler last week, or not even last week, three days ago. So your room. Coach, before, right at the end, you made sure to shake everybody's hand for Marshall in the midst of a bunch of celebrations for them, but obviously a lot of respect from you to them and kind of playing in a game like this, a rivalry match, and I'll be in the NCAA tournament game as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, we've always, at least I hope, that I've always taught my team to be graceful uh, winning and in defeat. Um, obviously, I wanted them to have their moment with their fans, but. And as the leader in the face of this program, it's important that I'm the one who makes sure to go over and congratulate those guys. Uh, uh, like I said, good team. Um, they won the game on the day. I don't think there was anything controversial really that you, you look at and you point to. Um, maybe, maybe uh, a penalty shot for us in the first half. Um, I'd have to look back and look at it, but it doesn't take away anything from those guys. So, absolutely. How about the atmosphere, Coach, just of an NCAA tournament? Everybody's kind of geared up. How much fun was that to play? Yeah, I think these are the games I said to my staff, I said, I wish I was playing today. Um, you, you love to be able to go on the go on the road and play in games like these, you know, or even at home. Uh, unfortunately, the weather wasn't great out at Butler um, on Thursday night, and so I think it kept some people at home. Um, but being able to come out here and, and us the travel fans the way we did as well, um, and, and, and Marshall people to come out and support their team was, was fantastic. I understand it was a record as well today. Um, so congratulations to them for that. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've been in these big games before. We go to big environments. Um, I don't think our guys were at all intimidated by the environment, which is fantastic. It's one of the reasons um, that, that we prepare the team the way that we do. But all the credit to, to the Marshall staff that put on a fantastic event today. And these are the kind of games that you, the kids dream to play in, you know? First time in 15 years that these teams meet, and obviously both programs on a national scale. Could this be the start of, of an annual series with Marshall? I don't know. I think uh, there's a lot that goes into that. Um, this is Marshall's best year by far, by far in the history of this program. Um, and there's so many things that go into scheduling. And, and number one, and it's, I think it's, for me, it's one of the worst, uh, the, it's one of the worst ways that we do this is the RPI. And the RPI uh, does not have the eye test on it. And so at the end of the day, your scheduling comes down to numbers. Um, and good teams sometimes have bad numbers. Um, and so the, I think that uh, it's probably a discussion that we can have, um, but whether or not uh, it's a good game for them, a good game for us. When we play it, is it a midweek game? Are we coming off of you know, uh, a travel game? There's so many things that go into it. And this conference, Conference USA, with the amount of travel that Marshall has to do, um, our conference, as you know, we're a bit of an outlier at the moment uh, with the MAC. Um, that adds some things to it. But um, I certainly think that it, it, it will, at the end of the day, come down to, to RPI and making sure it's a good game for both, probably. Marlon, you've been around soccer in the state for a while. I know obviously not the result that you wanted today, but just how big was this event for soccer in West Virginia? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I hope it was a big event for soccer in West Virginia. Um, you know, I, I think that if, if anything, it showcased that we've got some top-level collegiate soccer teams that are playing here. Um, you know, obviously, Marshall had a fantastic season 
and a lot of it will be predicated on what they do going forward and whether they can keep that momentum going forward. And I have full faith that they, they will keep that momentum going forward. They've got a nice a nice foundation uh, there. Um, as far as our program goes, um, I think we've kind of been over the last 15, 14, 15 years, probably the program that has done the most. Um, and, and certainly if this is going to become a rivalry and Marshall's going to year in and year out be one of the best teams, and yet it can only help the sport grow, continue to grow in the state. Um, having two teams that are competing at a national level, um, winning championships is, is great for, for, for the state. It's great for college soccer. It, it's great for the kids in the community to come out and watch. Um, you know, but I think time will tell. You know, if people, people showed up every game like they did today, then you really got something to talk about. It can't just be for West Virginia Marshall. It has to be for, you know, Marshall versus, you know, whoever and West Virginia versus whoever. Um, when, when, when we're at that point where it's consistently 2,000 plus at every single game, a la the Maryland's, a la, you know, the Yukon's, then all of a sudden you've got uh, a, a real vibrant fan base for, for, for soccer in the state of West Virginia. You mentioned maybe you guys didn't have your legs as much as you would like to today. Mm -hmm. A lot of counterattacking. Was that kind of your, your idea coming in or was that just you, what you needed yeah, to do once you got we, into we it? We had to, you know, we had to. Uh, listen, our, our season was really undone early on. We started out the year, I think six, six and two, six, two and one, six, one and two, something along those lines. And then we started having little pieces of our team break down. Um, and we started making a lot of mistakes. We started to insert new players into the team. Um, and we were conceding goals and we were not scoring goals. And so we had to change our style around a little bit to deal with the fact that we were, um, we were, we were playing without our full complement of players. Um, in this instance, coming and playing on a fast surface against a team that hadn't played in a week, um, when we played five games in 13 days, without a doubt changes the strategy of how you can go about things. Um, we still played with a very high line. We didn't sit back the counter. I think it had more to do literally with the fact that we didn't get as high as we wanted to to try and put them under pressure. Um, if you, and if you saw any of what we did on Thursday night compared to tonight, you remember Butler and Marshall were common opponents. They, both, they played each other as well. Um, you probably saw a night and day difference in the way we were able to approach the Thursday night game um, versus the game here uh, on Sunday afternoon. It's a very, very short turnaround with a lot of miles. Um, we, we, we did everything over these 13 days on a bus too. It's a little bit of a kicker, it was 2,000 miles. Um, and, and so, it, it's, it's, again, I don't want to make excuses for my team. Um, the facts are the facts. We, we, we looked a little dead-legged, uh, in particular in the first half. I thought we got the game back, and um, the crushing blow was conceding right before halftime because that wind was something else out there. It really, really was a tale of two halves as far as territory. Um, Marshall had so much more of the territory in the first half. We had much more of the territory in the second half. Um, but them getting that second goal was, uh, was, was a little bit of a backbreaker, um, especially since we'd worked our way back into the game, found a fantastic goal to even it up and to give it up so quickly after scoring um, was a little bit deflating. Uh, we were happy to get into the locker room at 1-0 down uh, to get back to 1-1. All of a sudden, okay, game on. Um, but then to go back down again, now you've got to use, spend all that extra energy again trying just to get back into the game. And that's where I think it sets us back a little bit.